This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday Eve and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday Eve is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Father, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. And Father, I pray tonight, even Lord, as we study more, as we seek to understand, to have more accurate, precise knowledge, understanding of this eternal life. I pray, Lord, there will be light, there will be understanding, Father, that your work comes together. This truth, we come together in our mind. And there will be a mental comprehension of this truth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome your operation to Tonight, and we open our mind and our heart unto you that the truth of God's word will take root in our heart tonight. Let Christ be exalted and be glorified, and let there be healing as the word of God go forth. Let there be deliverance, let there be miracle, let there be strength, let there be encouragement, and let the church of God be built up and edified. Thank you, Father. We receive the truth today with excitement, with humility, and with faith in our heart. Glory be to God. And in Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for being part of our Bible study tonight. And we are going right into it. So we have been on this awesome, wonderful uh, teaching series that we call Eternal Life. And so this is Eternal Life Part 2. We are making progress tonight. Glory be to God. I want you to know that it is absolutely vital. It is very essential for you as a believer to know beyond any altar, beyond any trace of doubt in your heart that now, presently, you have eternal life. You are not waiting to have it. You have it now. It is important. If there's anything that this teaching series is meant to do, it is intended to let you know, have an assurance, a confidence that now in this world you have eternal life. Glory be to God. Let's jump into scripture right away. The book of First John chapter 5, the book of First John chapter 5, 12 and 13, and I'm reading Amplify. First John chapter 5, 12 and 13. He who has the son, now look at this scripture, pay close attention. He who has the son by accepting him as Lord and Savior. He who accept Jesus. I believe that is you I'm talking to. So this is your letter, this is your mail, this is for you. So if you have accepted Jesus as a Lord and Savior, so look at what the scripture says, eh? now you have the life. He who has the Son has the life that is eternal, eternal life. He who does not have the Son of God by personal faith does not have life. Now pay attention to verse 13 now. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. I believe that is you. That is the name of the Son of God which represents all that Jesus Christ is and does. So what is the purpose of uh, John letter to us? It says so that you will know, so that you will know, with settled and absolute knowledge. Isn't that awesome? With a settled, absolute knowledge. That is beyond any trace of doubt. That you already, not maybe, not later, already, now, you have eternal life. That is the purpose of this study. To let you know, the word know there is the Greek word haido. He haido. It means to see. So I need you to see in this teaching series that already as a believer in Christ, you have eternal life. It means to perceive, to discern. It means to understand. So God wants me, God wants you to know, to believe, to understand that with God eternal life now. Glory be to God. But pay attention to this. So this teaching series is not just to uh, let you know beyond any doubt that it's with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have eternal life, but much more than that. Pay attention, don't miss this. So much more than knowing that you have eternal life, I also want to, in this teaching series, to actually have 
a precise and accurate and correct knowledge or understanding of what you are. That is the eternal life you are. It is something for me to know that I have something. It's another thing for me to actually understand what I have in my hand. Just like our iPhone. Some have the iPhone. They know they have the iPhone. But you see, they don't really understand uh, what that iPhone could do. All they do with it is perhaps take pictures, uh, record some videos, and uh, maybe send messages, and then receive call or call. But that I iPhone could do much more than that. If somebody listen to what I'm talking about, so you see, it does little or no good for me to know that I have eternal life if I do not really know what eternal life is. So this teaching series is intended, one, to let you know that you have eternal life, but also let you understand what eternal life is so that you can enjoy it to the max and so that you can express it. Isn't that awesome? Glory be to God. Philemon chapter 1. Let's quickly go to the book of Philemon chapter 1. I read uh, from verse 4 up to verse 6. Philemon chapter 1, 4 to 6. So you need to know what you are. You have eternal life, but God wants you to understand. God wants you to know what he has given you, which is eternal life. Look at the, the, the importance of this. Okay, from verse 4, Philemon chapter 1. Now this is Paul writing to his beloved friend and fellow liberal that he called Philemon. So he said, I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayer, hearing of your love and faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus, and towards all the same, verse 6, that the sharing of your faith, the sharing is, in another word, the communication. In Greek, it is called koinonia, the, the fellowship, the sharing, the communication of your faith may become effective. That is the word energy, from where you get energy. It means active, effectual. Powerful. So Paul is saying the communication of your faith, I want it to become powerful, to become active. How? He said by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So Paul is says that your faith is going to be energized, it's going to be effective, it's going to be effectual, it's going to be operative, it's going to be powerful by you acknowledging. The word acknowledgement is the Greek word epignosis. Listen to what epignosis means, very important. It means precise and correct knowledge. It means full recognition. It means full discernment. So listen to what Paul is saying to Philemon, his friend. He said, Philemon, the sharing of your faith is going to be active. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be effectual. If you have a precise and accurate, correct knowledge, a full understanding, a full discernment of what is in you in Christ Jesus, of the eternal life that you have in Christ. So you see, the reason why many of us are so dull in our faith, our Christian life seem very boring, alright? There's no energy. There's no there's no vibe. There's no there's no zeal. There's no passion. One of the reasons is because we do not have a precise, correct knowledge, full understanding, recognition of what God has already given to us. There's no way you will know what God has given to you, what you have in Christ, and you will not be passionate about your Christian life. And you will not be passionate to share your faith with other people. If somebody listening to what I'm talking about, about. Verse 6, that Philemon amplifies, say, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective and powerful. Now, listen to what he said now. Because of what? Of your accurate knowledge. Accurate knowledge of every good thing which is house in car. And this is my passion. This is my strong desire that you will have accurate knowledge of eternal life. That you will understand what eternal life is because I strongly believe, according to the word of God, that is going to make your faith effective. That is going to make you zealous and more passionate about the things of God. Glory be to God. So that is why we are taking on this beautiful teaching series, Eternal Life. Glory be to God. In this part 2, Eternal Life part 2, our focus is going to be on understanding the nature, understanding the characteristics, the major features of the eternal life that we have received. You know, in part one, uh, if you if you uh, follow us in part one, we actually look at what eternal life is. And I want to stress uh, before we jump into part two, let me just quickly refresh your memory and do a brief recap of some 
important truth that I don't want you to forget that we examine in part one. All right? And one of it is that we said eternal life, pay attention. This is important, and I cannot overemphasize it. Eternal life is not living forever. Eternal life is not just existing forever. Eternal life is not a matter of duration of life. Eternal life is not life after death. Pay attention. Do you know why it is not like that? It is because everyone is going to live after death. After all, that cannot be eternal life that believers have. Now, because God created us as immortal spirit, as immortal soul, that means we don't die. So when a man dies, what actually happens is that there's a separation. The spirit step out of the body, all right? And so the body returns to the dust. Is it that are put in the grave, cremated, or what have you? But you see, the spirit does not die. The soul does not die. Now look at what Jesus said in John chapter 5, 28, 29. So eternal life cannot mean living forever after death. Do you know why? Because whether you are a believer or unbeliever, whether you are a sinner or saint, you are still going to live. You understand? You will live forever. Is it that you live forever with God in heaven? Or you suffer forever with the devil and his demons in earth. But everyone is going to live forever. So that is not eternal life. That is not what eternal means. That is important. Because many people think eternal life is just living forever. No, it is much more than that. Eternal life is not about duration of life. It's about the quality of life. If somebody listen to me. John chapter 5, 28, 29. Look at what Jesus said here. Pay attention. John chapter 5, 28, 29. Do not marvel. Now, you hear yeah, Jesus was at Capernaum. And some people, after that, this happened uh, after the feeding of 5,000 people, all right? And so these guys, they began to look for Jesus all over the place. Eventually, they came to Capernaum where Jesus was, all right? And so they asked Jesus, where have you been? We have been looking for you. I wanted to see Jesus' response to them from verse 28. So Jesus said, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming. All right, uh, in which all who are in the graves we hear his voice and come forth. Now, those who have done good to the resurrection of land, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Now, pay attention. So, Jesus is saying everyone is going to experience a, a resurrection. He says, Some to resurrection of life, some to resurrection of condemnation. Pay attention to verse 29 now. Now, you see, he said, Those who have done good. Now, Eternal life or resurrection to life is not a reward for doing good. All right. So when you read the scripture, you have to uh, be careful of the context and not just jump at a conclusion. When you flip to the next chapter, the same John who wrote John chapter five. Now look at what he said, John six twenty seven. So people who came to Jesus at Capernaum. So Jesus said to them, verse twenty seven, when they met Jesus, do not labor for the food which perishes. But for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because the Father has set his seal on him. You know, he's talking of everlasting life. He's presenting himself as the bread of life or as living bread that is a symbol of eternal life. All right? So Jesus said to them, do not strive for this food. Look at the people respond to Jesus. So then they said to Jesus, what shall we do that we may walk the works of God? What shall we do? What they are saying is this. We want to have this eternal life. We want this living bread. What shall we do? The word do there or the word labor there is the Greek word egazomai. It means to work for something. It means to hear or to acquire by working. So in other words, they are saying to Jesus, we want living bread, but tell us how do we work for it? We want to hear it. We want to acquire it. We want to labor. We want to perform. And look at Jesus' answer. Verse 29. Then Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him who sent him. So you see, resurrection to life is not a function of the good work that you have done. It's a function of believing in Christ Jesus. But the point I'm trying to make is that eternal life is not living forever. It's not just living forever. If you have eternal life, you're going to live forever. But it is the quality of life that you have. It's the quality, it's God's kind of life. Because Jesus said in John 5 that everybody is going to experience resurrection. Some will experience resurrection and then they will be condemned and sent to hell. Some will experience resurrection, the believers in Christ, the saints in Christ, and then they will live forever with God. So you see, everyone is still going to live forever. So that is not eternal life. I hope that is taken. Praise God. So let's jump forward. So we said eternal life is God's kind and quality of life. 
Eternal life is God's kind and quality of life. You remember John chapter 5 verse 36. Let's jump there. Anyone who believe in the Son of God has eternal life. We said last week, eternal life, that is Ionios Zoe. Eternal means without beginning and end. It means that which has always been, which will always be. It means perpetual, never to cease. And the only one that is has always been, will always be, is God. Is that right? It's only God that is perpetual, that never ceases. And life there is Zoe. It means absolute fullness of life which belongs to God. So when we say eternal life, we are talking of God's life. The life that has always been, that will always be. We are talking of the life that never sees, that never heard. We are talking of life in its fullness. That is eternal life. And if you believe in Christ, that is what you are. First John chapter 3 verse 9. So eternal life is God's life in all. Eternal life is God's kind of life, God's quality of life in the believer. Are you with me? First John chapter 3 verse 9, New Living Translation. Those who have been born into God's family, are you part of us? Do not make a practice of sinning. Why? Because God's life is in them. That is eternal life. God's life in you, that is eternal life. God's life in me, that is eternal life. And we, and since of course you know, you can't have God's life without God. You can't have eternal life without Christ. So that means eternal life is actually God living in you and you living in God. Eternal life is Christ living in your heart, Christ ruling in your heart, Christ reigning in your heart. Eternal life is the communion of the Holy Spirit. Eternal life is the indwelling presence of the Spirit of God. Is that it? Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Last week, of course, we said eternal life is Christ himself. Eternal life is embodiment. Uh, or Christ is the embodiment of eternal life. Christ is eternal life manifested to all. Time will not permit me uh, to go over that. First John 5, 20. Uh, we read that. First John 1, 1, 2. Praise God. We also said eternal life is knowing God. That's what Jesus said in John 17, verse 3. This is eternal life that, you may, that they may know you. And the word know there is ginosko. It does not just mean knowledge. It actually means to experience and in an intimate way. It's, it's an idiomatic expression. Uh, they use it in the New Testament. Instead of saying uh, the husband has sexual uh, sex uh, with the wife, they will say the husband know his wife. All right. So that is talking of intimacy. So that is what eternal life is. So eternal life is intimacy with God. Eternal life is a loving, eternal relationship with God. Eternal life is community union with God is fellowship with God. Praise God. I think I pretty preach all that I preached last week. Praise God. So let's jump into eternal life part two now. Eternal life part two. We're going to look at four basic nature of eternal life. Don't forget, we are trying by the help of the Holy Spirit to have a precise, correct, and accurate knowledge, understanding of eternal life. So what makes eternal life different uh, in comparison to all other lives, uh, to physical, natural, ordinary life? What is is it that is special about eternal life? What does the scripture say about eternal life? So let's look at four basic major truths about the nature of eternal life. So this part two, the focus is on eternal life, the nature of eternal life. And four things we're going to uh, consider as time will allow us. Number one, uh, it is important to know that eternal life is the gift of God. Very important. We're going to examine this very closely. Eternal life is not a wages. It's not, it's not a pay. It's not a reward. It's not an allowance. It's not something you get for good work that you have done. So eternal life is not what God pay you because you have tried your best to obey God. You have tried your best to be a good person. You have tried your best to keep the law. And God said, well, you have done good enough. Get eternal life. No. Eternal life is not wages. Romans 6 verse 23. Look at how the scripture put it. Romans 6 verse 23, amplified. So eternal life is the gift of God. Is completely the gift of God. Romans 6 23, amplified. For the wages of sin is death. So the pay that sin pay you. Alright? If you embark on the life of sin, what you are going to get at the end of it is death. Just like if you hire someone to work for you, you pay them at the end of the week or bi-weekly or at the end of the month. So also sin pay wages. And the, the, the wages that sin pay is death. But look at what the Bible say for. But the free gift of God. That is a sharp contrast to wages. A gift is completely opposite wages. Wages 
is you get what you deserve. Is that right? But guilt is you are getting what you don't deserve. So eternal life is the free gift of God. The word gift there is the Greek word arisma. It's, it's spelled C-H-A-R-I-S-M-A. Arisma, what does that mean? It means a gift of grace. I love this. It means a favor. Which one receives without any merit of his own? So eternal life is something that you can receive without any merit of your own, without any good of your own. That means eternal life is available to all. Because whether you are the worst sinner or whether you are just a religious, a little sinner, it doesn't matter uh, how you think you are, how bad you think you are. Eternal life is something that God gives as a favor, as a gift of grace, without any reference to your good or to your goodness or to your merit. Are you listening to me? So that means eternal life is available to all. That means none is disqualified from eternal life because it is the gift of God. It cannot be merited. It cannot be deserved. It cannot be held. It cannot be bought. It is important to know that. So if you are listening to me, watching me tonight, and you say, Pastor, you don't know the life that I live. Terrible horse. Very, very terrible life. I'm telling you what God offers you as eternal life. God does not consider any merit of yours. Alright? You don't have to have any trace of any good or goodness in you. It is a free gift of God. It is not wages. God doesn't check uh, how good you are, how you have tried. No. He gives it to you without any merit of your own. That is eternal life. I wanted to see an encounter uh, between Jesus and a certain ruler. This drive home the point. Luke chapter 18. And I'm going to read from verse 18. Follow me as I read. Uh, Luke chapter 18. I'm reading New King James. Eternal life is the gift of God. It is what God gives as a gift of grace, as a favor, without any merit of ours. Luke chapter 18. Now a certain ruler asks Jesus. So a certain ruler came to Jesus asking him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What a wrong question to ask. What shall I do to inherit eternal life, all right? And I, want, and I love Jesus. Jesus asks, answer him in a sarcastic way, you know? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is good. You know the commandment. Now, the man, I wanted to get the question the man is asking, what shall I do? The word do, there is a Greek word, poheo, P-O-H-I-O. It means to act rightly, to do well. It means to perform. In other words, the guy will say, Jesus, I want to act rightly. I want to do well so that I can have eternal life, so that I can have relationship with God, so that I can have the life of God in me. What do I do to inherit? In fact, the word inherit is, is, is a very interesting word. It's the Greek word kleronomeo. Kleronomeo. K-L-E-R-O N-O-M-E-O E-O. It means to obtain something by right of inheritance. In other words, the guy is saying, Jesus, you know what? I trust myself, alright? Now, you just tell me, what do I need to do? I want to act well. I want to perform so that I can deserve eternal life. I love the way Common English Bible put that question. Uh, Luke 18, 18. Uh, he said, a certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Message Bible even render it more beautifully. Verse 18, Luke 18, 18. One day, one of the local officials asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to deserve eternal life? That is an half question. No one can deserve eternal life. You cannot do well enough for it. You cannot perform well enough for it. You cannot act well enough for it. It is the gift of God. Is somebody listening to me? So let's see Jesus now. Let's move forward in verse 20 now. So Jesus said, Look, 18 and you can say you know the commandment you want to perform to get it you want to deserve it you want to inherit it by right okay let's go so jesus answer sarcastically you know the commandment do not commit adultery do not murder do not steal do not be a false witness honor your father and your mother so let's see how far you are doing with that and look at the, this guy he said all these things i have cared from my youth Jesus said, that's good. So Jesus moved further. So when Jesus heard this thing, he said to him, you still lack one thing. It doesn't matter how good you are. When it comes to the Lord of God, 
there will still be one thing lacking. If someone listen, that is why it is foolishness for you to deserve, to, to try to, to merit what God is offering you as a gift. You can't get it as a gift. And that is still the problem with many of us today. We want to perform to get what God offered us as a gift. If someone listen to what I'm talking about, we want to inherit it by right. No, friend, just get it as a gift from God. Appreciate God and celebrate it. So Jesus said, there is still one thing you learn. That is it with the law. If anybody wants to act well to discern what God is offering as a gift, there will always be something lacking. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. There will still be something you are not doing well. Is somebody paying attention? So Jesus told him, sell all that you have and distribute them to the poor, verse 22, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. Look at his reaction now. So, but when he had this thing, he became... Very sorrowful. This is Mr. Perfect, all right? This is Mr. I've kept all the law. I am a good guy. I am the best in town. The Bible says he could not do that because he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean the rich don't go to heaven. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who had it and said, who then can be saved? What a good question. And I love Jesus' answer. So, but Jesus said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Salvation is impossible with men. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It is impossible with men to work for eternal life. It is impossible with men to live right or act well or perform or try to keep the law in order to deserve what God is offering us as a gift. You cannot work well to have a relationship with Jesus. Are you out there and say, I am trying my best. Your best will never be good enough for eternal life for you to inherit eternal life. Oh, I am trying to keep all the law. There will still be one thing lacking. So what do you do? Receive eternal life as a free gift of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So eternal life is a gift of God and it is to be received by faith in Christ Jesus and what he has done. That is important. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. I love to read in Amplify. For it is by free grace. God's unmerited favor that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. In other words, you have eternal life, and he said it is true faith, faith in who? Faith in Christ. And this salvation is not of yourself. Eternal life is not of yourself, that is of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Verse 9, not because of works, not the fulfillment of the lost demand. You cannot fulfill the lost demand in order to hear eternal life. Lest any man should go, it is not the result of what anyone can possibly do. I cannot overemphasize it. So eternal life is not the result of what you can possibly do. You can never do well enough for it. So no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. Before I move on, now because eternal life is the gift of God, it means it is available to all. It means no, no one is disqualified. No sin can disqualify you from it because God gives it without any reference to our goodness or to our merit. But Pay attention to it. Because it is gift of God, it means eternal life is irrevocable. It's irrevocable. It cannot be recalled. Now, look at this. Romans chapter 11 verse 29. That is why it is important to have a precise, correct, accurate knowledge of the nature of eternal life. Eternal life is the gift of God. It means there is none on earth that is disqualified. Everyone is qualified. Once you put faith in Christ and what he has done, eternal life is yours. You don't need to work for it. You don't need to act well. You don't need to perform to get it. And because it is the gift of God, God will never take it back. If somebody listening to me, Romans eleven twenty nine amplified. For God's gift, that includes eternal life, and is called, they are irrevocable. What does that mean? It means something that cannot be recalled. That's what irrevocable means. It means something that cannot be revoked. It is irreversible. It is unchangeable. That's what the word irrevocable means. It means something that is unutterable. Now, so look at the scripture. So, Gift of God are irrevocable. Eternal life as a gift of God is irrevocable. God cannot take it back. I love the way Amplify expand on it. He never withdraws them. 
once they are given. So once a man receives eternal life, God never withdraws it. God never takes it back. And he does not change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. That is important to understand about the nature of eternal life. Eternal life is the seed of God in me. Eternal life is the life of God in me. Eternal life is the nature of God in me. Eternal life is the spirit of God in me. Eternal life is God's DNA in me. And you know something about DNA? Now, my son, my daughter, have my DNA in there. It doesn't matter what they do, I can't take it back. If someone listen to me, I cannot recall it again. It is given and it is given forever. The same way with eternal life. Once God gives it to you, he cannot revoke it. He cannot recall it. He cannot withdraw it. He cannot get it back. It is yours forever. And that is why Jesus said, when you have it, you will never perish again. Isn't that beautiful? Glory be to God. Thank God for eternal life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number two. So number one, eternal life is the gift of God. It is available to all. No qualification needed. No merit of yours needed. And it is irrevocable. All right. Is that taken? You get it by faith in Christ. Now, number two, eternal life, pay attention, is available only exclusively in Christ Jesus. Eternal life is the free gift of God, but where do you get it from? Now, you get it only in Christ. This is important. Eternal life is not available in any religion. It doesn't matter how good, how popular that religion is. It doesn't matter the name that religion is called. You cannot find, you cannot get eternal life in any religion. Eternal life is not available in any religious institution or denomination. It doesn't matter the, 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 how big that institution is, you cannot find eternal life in any of these. Eternal life is not in a place. Eternal life is not in a gathering. Eternal life is not in a religion. Eternal life is in a person. And that is the person of Christ Jesus. Do you understand? It is a gift of grace. It's exclusively available in Christ. Let's jump into scripture. First John chapter 5. So we are considering the nature of eternal life. Number one, it is the free gift of God. Number two, this free gift of God called eternal life is exclusively available only in Christ. You cannot get it apart from Christ, without Christ, outside Christ. Is that taken? First John chapter 5, New King James from verse 10. Now, he who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Pay attention to 11 and 12 now. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. So where it is, and this life is in his soul. Eternal life is only in the Son of God, and that is Christ Jesus. And you listen to what I'm talking about. It is only cry that has authority to give eternal life. It is only cry that shares life, eternal life with all. It is only available in Christ. Verse 12 say, he who has the son has life. So you cannot have eternal life without cry. You cannot have eternal life apart from cry. So it is not a gift that can be thrown at you without the giver. If somebody listen to what I'm talking about, you can get healing without cry. If somebody listen to me, you can get miracle and breakthrough without having Jesus. I've been to crusade before, alright? And people that receive first healing miracle, they are not believers and we are not even sure they even received Christ before they went home. Are you listening to me? So you can get those things without Christ. But eternal life, you cannot. You will never have it without Christ. Because eternal life is Christ personified. It is when Christ comes to live in your heart that we say you have eternal life. Is somebody paying attention? He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I love Jesus replied to, uh, in John chapter 5, uh, to the religious leaders of his day. He told them in verse 39 and 40, Gospel according to St. John chapter 5, Jesus said, you search the scriptures. For in them you think, can you see, the thing that 
uh, by, by, by in the scripture, in, that is, he's talking of the, uh, the law of Moses, uh, uh, the Old Testament scriptures, the sacred writings. And so these religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they thought within themselves that the more they know the law of Moses, the more they practice those rituals, they are going to have life. They are going to have God's kind of life. And Jesus told them, you think you have eternal life in the scripture? It is not possible. Somebody listen to what I'm talking about. That is what Jesus said to them. No. He said, you sign the scripture. You think in them you have eternal life, but Jesus said, the scriptures only bear witness of me. They testify on me. Look at verse 40. But you are not willing to come to me, to me, to me, that you may have eternal life. So you only have eternal life when you come to Jesus and you open the door of your heart to let Jesus come into your heart. So Jesus said to them, you don't even get eternal life by reading scripture. You don't get eternal life by fasting and praying. You don't get eternal life by doing those religious stuff. No! You get eternal life by coming to Jesus, believing in him, and confessing him as your Lord and Savior. You know why? Jesus answered John 17 verse, 3, verse 2. John 17 verse 2, as you have given him. Now, while Jesus was about facing the cross, and he's asking the Father, the hour has come, glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. I love verse 2. I shall give him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many you have given him. It is only Christ Jesus that has received authority to give eternal life. That is why you cannot have eternal life apart from Christ. And that means if you have Christ, you have eternal life. So you cannot have eternal life apart from Christ. You cannot have life at Christ apart from eternal life. If somebody listen to me, if you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior living in your heart, ruling in your heart, what you have God is eternal life. Now pay attention to this. So at one point, at what point is eternal life available in Christ Jesus? It is important that eternal life, the gift of eternal life, is not available in Christ at his birth. It's not available in Christ during his ministry. It's not even available in Christ at his death. Eternal life is only available in Christ at his resurrection. So nobody received eternal life until Christ rose from the dead. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So you see, you don't receive eternal life by believing that Jesus, I was born of a virgin Mary. That is good. That's a good try. But you don't get eternal life like that. You don't even get eternal life by believing that Jesus was a good man, a good rabbi, a good teacher, a miracle worker, a healer. No, you don't get eternal life like that. Are you, you don't even get eternal life by believing that Jesus died for sin. That's good. But that don't give eternal life. You only get eternal life when you believe in the risen Savior that he died for your sin and he rose again. Is somebody listening to me? Look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Let me quickly jump to verse 9 because of time. Look at it. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. So what do you believe? He said you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You know, not believing that he was born of Holy Mary. Not believing that he was a good man, a miracle worker. Not believing that he, 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 he was, uh, uh, he, he, he performed wonders and miracles while he was on earth. No. Not even believing that he died. But you must believe that he rose from the dead. Then you will be saved. Someone listen to me. Because without a resurrection, Paul said, in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, Amplify, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is a mere delusion, full-time, fruitless, and you are still in your sin. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, none of us will have eternal life. So, eternal life is available at the resurrection of Christ. So, how do I receive eternal life? Believing that Christ died for my sin, but that he rose again. That is eternal life. Until Jesus rose from the dead. In John 20, 17, now look at what he said when he rose from the dead. He told Mary, do not cling to me. Verse 17. He said, but go tell my brethren, I love thee. He said, go and tell them, I am ascending to my father. But because I have risen up, he is no longer my father. He is now your father. I am ascending to my father, to your father as well, to my God, your God. In other words, the resurrection of Christ gave us access to fellowship, to intimacy, to communion with the Father. That is what made available eternal life to us. Is that taken? Do you understand that? Eternal life is a free gift of God. Eternal life is exclusively available in the person of Christ, but it's available at his resurrection. So he takes believing that Christ died for sin. Not only that, but that he rose again for anyone to have eternal life. If you don't believe in the risen Savior, if you don't believe in the 
living Savior, you cannot have eternal life. If somebody listen to that, glory be to God. Let's see if we can still take two more. We are looking at the nature of eternal life in this teaching series, Eternal Life Part 2. And we say eternal life is a gift of God, available to all. Eternal life is available at no merit of her. None is disqualified from it. It is an irrevocable gift of God. It is available only in Christ. And it is available at his resurrection. So you need to believe and confess that Christ truly uh, rose from the dead. And is alive for you to partake of the life that he shares. The life that he gives. Number three now. I want you to know that eternal life is a present reality. A, eternal life is a present possession. It's a present inheritance. It's a present experience of the believer. This is very important. Very, very crucial. Now, God promised eternal life before time began. Eternal life was once a promise of God, but now it is no longer a promise. It is a promise fulfilled now. Let's see the scripture. Titus chapter 1. I love to read this. It's a read version. The book of Titus chapter 1. Let me quickly read from verse 1. This is Paul writing. Greeting from Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I was sent to help God's chosen people have faith and understand the truth that produces a life of devotion to God. Pay attention to verse 2. This faith and knowledge make us sure that we have eternal life. God promised that life, that is eternal life, to us before time began. So eternal life was God promised before time began. God and God does not lie. So look at verse 3 now. And at the right time, at the right time, God lets the world know about that lie. He did this, he did this through the telling of the good news message. He trusted me with that work. I told people that message because God our Savior commanded me to. So what was Paul referring to? Paul was saying eternal life was was a promise of God before the time began, but now eternal life is no longer a promise. That promise was fulfilled the moment Jesus died and rose again. Is somebody listening to me? So eternal life is not is no longer a future promise. It's no longer something to wait for. I think when you read some uh, renditions in the scripture, it pushes eternal life to, to the future as a future promise, as a future reality. That is not correct. Eternal life was once a promise, but it is now a reality. It is a promise that God has fulfilled. John the Beloved also affirmed it. Let's see the witness of John the Beloved. First John chapter 1, First John chapter 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have had, uh, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, that the life was manifested. So eternal life was manifested. That is Jesus. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was the Father, was manifested to all. So it was no longer a promise. So we have eternal life as Christ. Eternal life in Christ. Jesus was a full expression of eternal life. Jesus was the personification expression of eternal life. But he had that eternal life in himself. He expressed that eternal life until when he died and rose again. When he rose again, he shared that life with us. He gave that life, the same life, to all who believes in him. Is someone listen to me? So eternal life is ours now. We read the scripture before. It is good to go back to it. First John chapter 5, 11 and 12. First John 5. And this is God's testimony. He has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Verse 12. He who has the son. Has life. That is eternal life. Not that he who has the son. Should wait till he die to get eternal life. No. He has it now. The word has there is a beautiful word in Greek. It is called heho. E-C-H-O. Heho means to have something in your hand. Now the word heho which is has. It means a present. Your present possession. It is not something you are trying to get. It's not something you are looking forward to get. It's something that is in your hand. Something you owe. A reality now. A possession now. So eternal life is my reality now. God now lives in me. And I have the DNA of God. I have the spirit of God in me. I have a loving relationship with God. Glory be to God. Christ lives in my heart. That is eternal life. And that happened now. I am enjoying it now. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we need to know that. We need to know that. Eternal life 
It's not something that we are going to have. First John 3, 9. I think we read it before, but let's read it for emphasis. First John chapter 3, verse 9. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sin because God's life is in them. Not that it will be in them, it is now in them. So eternal life is in us now, and we are enjoying it. All right? Praise God. But listen to this is important. But you see, eternal life is not something that we just enjoy on this side of eternity. Eternal life, because it is a endless life of God, it's a holy zoe, it's a life that never ceases, it's a perpetual life. It is also the life we are going to enjoy after death. So we start enjoying it now. We start experiencing it now. We're enjoying relationship with God. I am a child of God. I have the life of God. I have God lives in me. I have the spirit of God in me. God tabernacle in me. I am God's house. I am enjoying communion and fellowship with God. God's spirit is leading and guiding me. But listen today, even when I died and I transition, I will now enjoy it to the fullest. So we start enjoying eternal life now, but you see, when immortality swallow up mortality, when we share this body of sin, and you listen to what I'm talking about, then we are going to enjoy it without any limit. We're going to enjoy it without any distraction. We're going to enjoy it without any hindrance. Is somebody listening to me? That is why at time, the scripture talks about eternal life in a, in a future test, because it is something that we are still going to enjoy, and we're going to enjoy it in its full, uh, 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 to the full extent after this life. Is somebody paying attention? You see Matthew 25, Matthew 25, 44 to 46. Now, this is Jesus uh, uh, when he gave the parable of the sheep and the goat. I'm just going to jump into it because time. Now, he said from verse 44, Matthew 25, Then they also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, As surely I said to you, in as much as you did not do it to one of the least of you, you did not do it to me. So Jesus referring to the goat now. Look at verse 46 now. And this we go, that is the God, all right, they will go away into everlasting punishment. But what about the sheep? But the righteous, they will go into eternal life. Now, you will think eternal life is something you go into. No. Eternal life is something we have already received now. Eternal life is Jesus stepping into me. Eternal life is God abiding in me and I abiding in God. I'm already in it now. Are you listening to me? But you see, the scripture at time, put it in the future term because it is something you are still going to enjoy more and more. Now, let me read the way Passion and Easy Bible put it and that will clarify this. Now, Matthew 25, 46. Let me read Passion Translation. And they will depart from his presence and they will go into eternal punishment. But the godly and the beloved sheep, they will go, they will enter into eternal bliss, eternal joy, eternal happiness. That is what is called eternal life in the future. Eh? But here's the English Bible actually clarify it better. Verse 46, Matthew 25. Then, those people on the king's left side will go away to the place where God will punish them forever. That's the lake of fire. But the good people, all right? When we say good people, not just people who do good, but people who believe in Christ, all right? The people, the good people on the king's right side, they will live forever with God. So you see how this rendition put eternal life? Now it said it is living forever with God. So you see, eternal life is what we are enjoying now. Is God living now with us? Yes! God is now living with us now. I am God's residence on now. You are God's residence on now if you are a believer. God is living with me now. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But you see, when I share this body, when I transition to glory, then I'm going to live with him fully, physically, forever. That is why eternal life is often in the scripture referred to as also a future reality. But it is a now reality. Praise God. We're going to stop there because of time. I'm going to continue uh, uh, next week on the nature. So, uh, for nature of eternal life, but we have been able to consider three today because of time. Eternal life is the gift of God. It is a gift. It is free. It is not something to work for. You don't need to impress God. You don't need to perform. Just believe in Christ. You have the gift of eternal life. Nothing disqualifies you from it because you can never qualify for it on your own. Praise God. And it is a gift that God gives and it does not recall that. It does not withdraw it from you. So if you have eternal life, it is yours 
forever, throughout eternity. Glory be to God. We also say that eternal life is the gift of God, a gift of grace, but it is exclusively available in one person, and that person is Christ Jesus. So eternal life cannot be found anywhere else, in anything else. It doesn't matter the name we call it. You can't find it in a religious leader. You can't find it in any religion. It is only found in Christ, and eternal life is available at the restoration of Christ. So to have eternal life, you don't just believe that Christ died for you, you believe in his resurrection that he rose from the dead. Because it is his rising from the dead that makes eternal life available to us. Somebody listening to that, and uh, the third thing we say about eternal life is that it is a now possession of the believer. Eternal life is a now inheritance. Eternal life is our reality now. It is something to enjoy now. Don't wait till you die. Start enjoying relationship with God. You have God's life. You have God's ability. You have God's DNA. You have God's spirit. God now lives in you. Start communicating with God. Start speaking with Him. Start enjoying relationship Start allowing the Spirit to lead and guide you. That is the benefit of eternal life. And when you leave this world, you will enjoy it to the mass. Glory be to God. And so let's celebrate God tonight for the gift of eternal life. What a wholesome gift that we have in Christ Jesus. We don't have to deserve it. We don't have to merit it. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. We thank you because we have the Son of God, and so we have eternal life. We thank you, Lord, because it is ours now to enjoy. And Lord, we are going to enjoy it not only in this life, but even after life, after death, we are going to enjoy it throughout eternity. We are going to be with you forever, beholding your glory. Father, we thank you. I'm asking, Father, that this truth, O oh God, we take root in our heart, that we will never forget that we have God eternity. We have God eternal life. We have it now, and we're going to have it forever that you never revoke it. You never recall it. You will never withdraw it from us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of eternal life. We will enjoy it to the mass, even here or now. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.